You are now recording. Okay, uh, it's 9.32. As chair of the Division Three of the House Finance Committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with the governor's emergency order 12 pursuant to executive order 2020-04 as extended this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I'm confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. We are using the Zoom video webinar for this remote meeting, all members of the committee and the staff of state agencies with agenda items have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously watch and or listen to the meeting on Zoom or phone during the following the directions and links provided in the House calendar, starting in House calendar eight, running through the current version. They're all on the Gen Court website. Um, the public is a, uh, has been provided notice of uh, information for accessing the meeting um, via telephone. Those are also in the House calendar. We are providing a mechanism for the public to alert us if they have problems with ac access. They'll email us at lba underscore fiscal at leg.state.nh.us. If we do get emailed or otherwise find out we have a problem with uh, the public participating or, or watching, uh, we will adjourn and reschedule. Note that um, all the votes that we take in this meeting shall be done by roll call. Uh, we can start by uh, taking a roll call attendance. Each member, please uh, say where you are and if there's anyone around you so we comply with the right to know law. Uh, Mr. Clerk, are you ready to take a roll? I am. Representative Irv. Uh, present, home alone in my home office. Representative Weiler, I'm here in Kingston alone in this room. There's others in the house. Representative Dean. I'm home in Guilford. My wife is in and out of the in and out of the house. Representative Walner. I'm at my home in Concord <clears throat> and I'm alone. Representative Nordgren. I'm here in my dining room in Hanover and I'm alone. Representative Rogers. I'm here in my apartment in Concord. I'm with my dog, Romeo, and otherwise alone. Representative Edwards. I'm in my home office in Auburn. There are others in the house, but my door is shut. Chairman, all present. Thank you so much. So, uh, Representative Wal Walner, let's start with you. Do you have a question, ma'am? <coughs> I do. I was wondering if I could ask um, Representative Weiler sort of his plan for um, when we will meet as a full finance committee and then also what he thinks, what date he thinks he might be doing the uh, budget briefing. I have uh, set the 26th for us to exec as a full committee on the bills that we have before us and I think that's going in the calendar and we want to make sure we have all the reports and all the divisions finished and then I have to get together with the speaker and the clerk to schedule the presentation to the to the house on the budget I don't know whether they've got me scheduled in those that three-day session or whether I should try to do it the week before like on a, the 30th or or the 31st. So we've got to get together with them and see what, what they want to do because, you know, we've got to have a, a big space. So I don't know. It, it's complicated to go and book that and all that stuff. So I'm going to find out probably today whether there's something set up for uh, us on that three day deal. Thank okay. You. Great. Thank so, you. So, uh, thank you for that question because that, that stirs in my mind the idea that. We're not scheduled to vote uh, out of uh, Division Three 
House Bill 254 or 600 until Monday. If we did that on Monday, it would not hit the calendar so that it was noticed for the 26th. Is that a is that a problem? Do I, do we need to vote on on 254 <laughs> sooner so it can be in the calendar? No, I'll just just make the assumption and have it in the calendar for the 26th. Okay. We'll have all the bills that are before all the divisions, and we'll have them all <laughs> for the 26th. So we, can we, we can continue to plan on voting it out of Division Three on Monday without it being a problem. Yes. <clears throat> okay, so um, today's work, uh, yes, ma'am, I represent Norger. Hi, thank you very much. Good morning. Um, could Representative Weiler please clarify something he said? He said, we're going to need a big space for the informational session on the budget. I was unsure what he meant by that. Well, if, we, if we're going to have, uh, we don't have, we don't have a method to do 400 people on a Zoom session. So I assume I'll get together with the clerk and, and the speaker and see if there's any other plan. But I assume that we'll have maybe an hour or so uh, in those three days. If, if we want to do it before the house and have session and have questions and so on. But uh, <clears throat> I haven't got into that discussion yet. So I'm, I'm still confused, but that's OK. No, I just what I meant by the big space was if we want to have it before all the members of the house. Representative Wolner. So I <clears throat> just want, my husband just came in the room, just so you'll know. Um, so, okay, I'm trying to understand. I thought that we were having the budget on the floor of the house, which will be at the sports arena on the 7th, which is the first of the three days. And I thought, the, I thought as I remember, the briefing needs to be a couple of days before so are you thinking we will have the briefing at an on-site location? I don't know how else we can do it and still do it before everybody in the house uh, because, of the, because of the setup. We haven't been, we haven't been able to work out a, a 400 member Zoom at this point. So you know, I, I don't know whether we have to have the briefing before that or whether it's gonna be, or whether it's gonna be part of that because we, we could do it on the first day and then vote on the third day or whatever, but we haven't had a chance to sit down with the speaker and the, and the clerk and, and work that out. Every time okay. I want a meeting, I got a meeting here. So. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm not seeing any other questions. So um, let, let's, uh, let's get uh, ourselves oriented to the day. Um, I've, I've, emailed this and I think we've uh, we've shared this in other ways that we're going to hit HB2 sections 26, 30, 31, 33, 38 and we're going to finish up section 39. Uh, Re Representative Walner will, uh, will, will take us to a conclusion there. I'd like to uh, discuss those and hopefully vote on those and then we'll have uh, time I think to talk about um, HB1 and uh, HB2. So, so that's, that's kind of the game plan. And uh, uh, Mr. Ripple, if you would bring up section 26 of House Bill 2, please. Oh, Representative Rogers, yes, ma'am. Um, you said yesterday that we were gonna start out by having Representative Earth give us a tutorial on how to find things and how to use Oh, them. yeah, I did. And I didn't write it on my note, so. So, so you're right. Um, uh, let's. Uh, gosh, it just it does feel to me like just a uh, like we we've already moved past it. But uh, Representative Earth, can you can you give us like three minutes on how you how you uh, built your spreadsheet? And uh, I think Mr. Ripple may need to give you uh, a, a authority to share your document. Chairman Edwards. Before we get yes, into Mr. Ripple, Mr. Ripple is not on the call right now. He's trying to get back on. 
Um, I can share any documents, though, if you need to, just let me know. Can you delegate to Representative Verf to share? It'd be easier if they did it. Chairman, you're currently listed as the host, so it uh, it's within your authority to do it. Oh, well, let's see how I do that then. Um, I look, go to participants. I go to Earth. I click on Earth. Could, before you do that, can I just ask either Sharon or, I'm sorry, Representative Norgan or Representative um, any of the people that want the tutorial, what it is they're looking for in a tutorial? Is it how to search the document? Is it, what is it you want to know? Can I come, um, Representative? Yeah. Um, I think one of the issues <clears throat> last night I was looking for something. Um, I was looking for the Sununu Center on the list, and you can't really find stuff on the list. I mean, it's really difficult. Okay. So that I think we just need a clarification of how do we even find. A department on your list. It seems difficult. Anyway, that's whatever. That maybe I'm just confused. No, no, no. You're not confused. You don't need to share any. Let, let me let me speak. You don't need to share any screens. I understand now. Okay. Um, you're right. You you can't. I mean, I assume people be looking at this on a computer screen and they would be searching for the words because it is a PDF document and you can search for it. But let me say this. Um, I don't think you have to worry about it. Um, as we discussed. Uh, yesterday, this is not the budget. So I don't think we're gonna be talking anymore about that document and I'm sure the chairman will correct me if I'm wrong, but assuming we don't, not referring to it any further, are there any other issues with that document? Um, I guess my problem was the same is that I trying to find things on there cause I didn't, I, as I understood we were adding to this baseline is how you wanted to do the budget and I, was trying to find places and I couldn't find things. I tried to figure out what order it was in. And I actually did try to use it on the computer and do a find or a search, but I couldn't figure out where you put things and what words you use to, um, I, I actually on, on a few different places, I tried up to 10 different ways to search it and I still couldn't find things. Okay, fair enough. But I know that these are not my words. <laughs> this is the DHHS document. This is not something I made up. <laughs> So what I search for when I'm searching it is the four digit account numbers. If I happen to know the actual name, it will work, but you have to know the actual name, of course, not just some something that's close. So I tend to use account numbers, but I did not make up the ordering or the wording. That's a straight, that spreadsheet is straight out of DHHS. So you all work from the uh, big PDF document that you, that we get. And we also at the same time got the spreadsheet and that's what I was working from. So that's exactly what that document is that, that I sent out. So we have to go, um, if we search, we put in the search <laughs> issue as the account number. So for instance, in, in your case, if you're comfortable, which I think Could you we are. please share the document and do a live example, please? Yes, I understand that, but you have me doing a bunch of other things right now, buddy, and I just don't have that right at my fingertips. If you give me some no, time, I know. To find it. I know we it got overlooked yesterday. I asked people to help me figure out what we were going to do today and tomorrow, and I and all of us forgot that we were going to do this tutorial. So, well, Mr. Chairman, if, we're not, so, if you could clarify, if we're not going to use this, wait a second. So, Representative Rogers has properly reminded us that we did commit to doing the tutorial. And, and, it's, and it's my fault for not putting it on the Thursday agenda and reminding everyone. So I'm, I'm sorry, but Re Representative Rogers is correct. Now, what were you saying, Representative Rogers? Um, are we not going to, President Irv said, we're not gonna use this anymore. Is that the fact or are we? I think we've, it's largely been used. I think it's largely been used. It served its purpose to be a baseline. We went through several major accounts yesterday to figure out, you know, the difference between the FY21 baseline and what the governor's uh, budget would uh, do in terms of using the funds available to us from the Ways and Means estimate. 
So, so to the extent that I think uh, we got to MMIS and we were largely out of resources at that point, I don't really see us needing the earth working document at this point. I, I think it served its purpose, which is kind of why I didn't think it was worth sharing with the public because it, it was such a transitory working document. <laughs> Representative Walner, you had your hand up and you you've taken it down. So I guess, Mr. Mr. Chair, I. So if we're not going to use that document, how are we proceeding? There it is. There it is. Okay. So so can you show us how you would search? Like so, for example, search on um, the Medicaid code that we used. What was it? Something like seven zero four eight or something. So up in the upper right hand corner in the search bar, you typed in 7984. So type in 7948. 7948 and, and there he found Medicaid management. So, so if you search on the activity codes that have been used by the department and by the governor, you can find um, the account lines in uh, Representative Burr's document. Now, it, it would also work, I think, if, if he were to type in um, something like uh, admin on aging. Can you type words in? A admin on ADM. There it is. Yeah, there it is. So, so you can use either the account code or the names of the state. He didn't invent any of that. So that, that's how you do a search in a PDF. Are there any questions on searching on the PDF? I, I think for the most part, we're, we're, we're kind of, this document has served its useful life uh, because it was used yesterday extensively for us to figure out how much, how many dollars we had to invest in various parts of the budget based on an FY21 baseline. So, so thank you, Representative Erf. I, I'm not seeing any questions on, on Representative Erf's document at this point. Okay, can we go, and thank you, Representative Rogers for, for reminding me that I, I did commit to that tutorial. Thank you. Representative Walner. So if we're not using Representative Erf's document any longer, how are we? How are we proceeding on the on one? We are proceeding with the discussions that have been scheduled for uh, Thursday and for Friday. Um, uh, we we will we will be building uh, a House Bill One amendment, uh, and uh, we will discuss the amendment on Monday, and maybe vote on it on Monday. And if we don't vote on it on Monday, we'll vote on it on Tuesday. But that the discussion that we've had will be reflected in the House Bill 1 amendment that we'll bring in for discussion and voting. Thank you. Sure. Good question. <sighs> um, and hopefully I said that in the email I sent earlier, that voting on it on Monday is, is an aspirational goal. Um, all right, so House or HB2 section 26. Can we pull up that Mr. Ripple and show it? Sure. Okay. 
Can everyone see it on their screen or seen it, see it at home? And I can bring up the statute that this references since it may not be too obvious from the language here what it's doing. Representative uh, Weiler, when we discussed this initially, said that he would recommend that we just simply remove this section. Is that still the case, Representative Weiler? I think that's what we heard from uh, Ms. Rounds and some other people in HHS. They said even if we remove this, it still would have the same effect what's, what's in law presently. So did you want me to bring Karen over? She's still in the audience as of now. Uh, sure. Good morning. Hi. Um, I, I think that uh, there might be some confusion between this section and another section. This is a section that the department would uh, kindly request to, to keep in. Um, this allows us to transfer funds from uh, personnel class lines to elsewhere. Um, and uh, the best example I can give was, was one that Representative Earth got to see this morning. Um, which is we budget MOE for lots of things in personnel lines. And so if a person of a position is not filled, um, we still need to meet that MOE. So we need to move those funds out of the personnel lines, sometimes to contract lines to make sure that we meet the MOE. Um, so it, it is a really important provision to be able to manage the department financially. Um, and also, the other thing I would say about it is it also it forces HHS to manage their own budget. So when without this language, HHS would be put into the pool with all other agencies uh, regarding personnel. So if a personnel line is overspent, you go to the pool to bring money in, but you can't use that pool for anything else. So it it sort of intermingles us with everyone else. And I think it's important that DHHS manage their own budget and, and not be reliant on other agencies' lapses. So Representative Weiler? Yeah. My, my note did say that you suggested removal and then we I added a note that the department will address it. And I, I think Ms. Brown's just addressed it. Are, 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 are you satisfied or do you have other questions, sir? No, I think I was confused with a different section. I think I confused the number. But if you want, I, I would make a motion to accept this. May, I, may right. I add just one other thing? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, the other thing I would add is the department put in the request for this transfer authority to end on 630 at the end of the biennium. Um, which has been traditionally what's been happening. It's, it's been a biennium um, uh, thing. So we would request that it went until the end of the biennium. The governor's office did change it to be January. Um, and my understanding is that they wanted us to see what would happen uh, if we only had it, if we didn't have it. I, I'm very nervous to see what happens if we don't have it. So that, that would be my request. Okay, so let's look again at section 26, if we could, Mr. Ripple. May I comment? Uh, yes, sir. Before we had this in, there would be several agencies that would ask to have more people added and so on and, and uh, tell us why they had to add them and add, add people to their budget. And then when they ran short of money, they would transfer money out of those lines that they knew they were going to keep empty anyway <coughs> and spend it on other things. And we, so we wanted to keep all the other departments strictly uh, to personnel. Money goes into personnel lines because what happens is at the end of the year, DAS goes in and because some of the uh, departments didn't have enough money put in to cover all the 
benefit lines, especially in the insurance, that they would take the uh, ones that had a higher higher income people and they would they would have a higher input to, and they would level them out with the lower income people that didn't have as much uh, contribution toward the insurance. So DAS wanted them all to all the personnel lines to stay as personnel lines for that reason. So we put that in, but um, several years ago, we decided that HHS needed more flexibility and, and I, I supported it. I think we all did that have been around a while and, and we put this in, but it's, it's kind of temporary because you know, we might want them to go back. If, if a DAS comes in with the same problem, we might want to have everybody keep all the personnel money and personnel lines. Thank you. So I, my interpretation is that this, this provides DHHS additional flexibility. And if they were to operate in a constrained budget environment, that that flexibility might be really important to helping them meet needs. So it would, is that the case, Ms. Rounds? In a constrained yeah. budget environment, this becomes more important? Yes, exactly, exactly. And, and I think I've talked before, like we, we never know what crisis is coming, right? We didn't see the opioid crisis, all of these, these things that happen within a biennium and we need to move funds from one area to another to address the crisis. So, so then if, if we're predisposed to accepting this language, um, I think we just should, uh, the, the committee members should comment on whether we should go with the governor's uh, expiration date of January 1, 23, or the tr traditional end of the biennium, June 30 of 23. Are there any thoughts on that subject? Representative Walner? Well, I would think that the end of the biennium would make more sense. I mean, we're, we would just discontinue it in six months before the end of the uh, before the end of the year. End of the biennium doesn't seem like a good plan, but I mean, that's just my any, thought. Yeah. Do we have anyone from the governor's office that might explain to us the reasoning for a, a kind of an unusual end date? Do you see like Lisa English or Matt Malou? I don't see either. I'm going to tap dance and I'm going to say that I'm betting they did that because they thought that if you get, if you let that flexibility go all the way to the end of the fiscal year, you start to motivate uh, the use it or lose it mentality of a lot of budget people that say, let's figure out how we can obligate or spend this money. Um, and that tends, that use it or lose it attitude is often wasteful. And so maybe they thought, let's let's go ahead and allow the, the flexibility, but let's end the flexibility so that we don't create a end of the year panic buying. That would be my theory for why they picked that date. Um, why don't we uh, defer this and see if we could invite somebody from the governor's office to just restate why they wanted it six months early? Uh, who, who can who can reach out to either of those two? I can send an email right now. Okay. All right, so we'll come back to that. And uh, for the, those of you who have your HB2 up, you can go to um, section 30. This is the parental reimbursement. This is another one, Ms. Rounds, where I think we said that the department should come talk again about this. Yes, Kevin, could you bring Meredith over? Sure. So I can give you like the 300,000 foot view and I, I don't think that's gonna be helpful. So she can give you a better view. Yeah, 
Meredith, are you there? Should be in, no? Hi, I'm here, can you hear me? Yes, welcome back. Good morning. Can we also bring in Francesca Hennessy? She's coming in now. Okay, great, thank you. Francesca Hennessy is our administrator for fraud, waste, and abuse. Hello. And work. Here she is. This is Francesca Hennessy. Specifically in fraud reimbursement. Go ahead, Francesca, sorry. Hi, good morning. Um, thank you for letting us speak today on this bill. I wanted to go over a little bit of the history. Last year, um, in House Bill 1162, the parental reimbursement obligation by bipartisan legislation was actually um, taken away. There's no longer a parental reimbursement obligation. And again, that happened last year, um, fiscal year 2020 by bipartisan legislation. The legislation we are proposing today that you are looking at simply moves the effective date back to June of 2020, or really July 1st, 2020. It was supposed to be effective on January 1st, 2021. So that's section 30. Section 31. Let, let, yes. Let's stop, let's hold up there. Sure. So, so uh, this, is, this would be retroactive. So what I assume Okay, so what I think this parental reimbursement was, as I recall, was that we could uh, go back and try to do debt collection from parents to help recover some of the costs associated with the child services that we provided, and that our debt collection experience on this was such that uh, we found that the cost of collection greatly exceeded the cost of, or the amount that we were able to obtain. So we were running a, a losing business proposition. And, and, and so I'm guessing that you guys just halted it when you could in July 1, 2020. And by passing this, we're going back and giving you guys permission to have stopped early. Yes, that is a good That's summary. Correct. Just to, yes. to will... clarify one point though, we. It wasn't a it was um, a one to one. We weren't bringing in any yeah. money. We weren't losing money, but we weren't bringing in any money. It cost as much to run the program as what we were getting back. Okay, yeah. Representative uh, Weiler. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can remember uh, going way back that if a child was in the DCYF detention center and at the time it was like 100,000 a year. If the child was there a year or even six months, there was a huge debt of 50 or 100,000. And you know they would look at the parents' financial uh, ability and, get a, get a, and maybe come up with a payment of two or $300 a month. And so it was like having another mortgage. So we did that for a while. And then there were so many complaints that they, they knocked it down to, okay, you pay so much a month while the child is in the facility and after that the payments stop. But I wonder if maybe we overlooked the fact that some parents might have been carrying what amounted to a second mortgage for 20 or 30 years. So does this relieve those parents that might have been paying for, for years and years or did we stop that already? No, that's a good question. And that's what the section 31 would allow us to do. It would it would allow us to stop to motion the court to stop those enforcement orders. So all those orders that are already in place. So what the legislation did was it said, department, you no longer have to establish orders as of this date. And so section 30 is asking, can we stop establishing orders, stop the program as of July 1st, 2020, instead of January 1, 2021. Section 31 does allow us, as you said, to go back all these, we have over a thousand orders. So it would allow us to petition the court and say, this unit no longer exists. Can we stop um, this collection? And I have a couple of reasons for that when you're ready. Uh, Go ahead, you're on a roll. 
Thank you. <laughs> um, again, once this position went away, we had about six uh, financial agents in this unit. They all left. So this unit is now the collections part of it is being um, handled by our administrative support staff. So we're really not doing the active enforcement that we were doing. We are simply collecting checks that come in. The problem with that is it leads to some inequity, right? So if we're not enforcing orders of the people who don't want to pay and we're just collecting, um, there's a certain number of people who aren't paying, there's a certain number of people um, who are. And it uh, when running the numbers, I looked quickly last night, it, about a third of our cases are in delinquency, meaning those parents just aren't paying. And we don't have the staff right now to bring them back to court to enforce these orders. I'm not even sure that the, um, uh, you know, the, the reasoning behind it is even there if we brought the, this to the court, if the court would say, um, hey, department, the, the legislator changed their minds. They don't even want you doing this program anymore. Why are you asking me to enforce this? So there's that as well. Are there any questions on sections 31 or 30? Okay, uh, there's a question, uh, Representative Weiler. No, I, I think there ought to be some way we can tell parents, you know, you didn't, you didn't raise this child responsibly. And this, this was a way to get their attention, but some of the irresponsible children had irresponsible parents. So I don't know if we changed anything. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, uh, well uh, thank you for, for, for coming in, uh, Francesca. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if you have other things to talk about here. We're, we're gonna go to section 33 now for a discussion. And my note here says, um, the governor's office wanted replacement language and that was completed over the weekend. So I think what we're seeing on the screen is the original HB2 language. Is, is, was the, did we receive replacement language to this that you know of Mr. Ripple? Um, I don't. You know, I don't think so, but Karen, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe you sent me something that I didn't notice. I did, but I probably sent you about 150 emails in the past two right. days. So, um, yes, I did uh, draft language. I had it approved by the governor's office and sent it over. All right, I'll find that and, and send it out. Well, Go ahead and take a moment and see if, if between the two of you, you can find a way to get it on the screen and we'll just take a look at it. Okay, let me see. And, and then if Anyone from the governor's office has joined us since we uh, asked them to, uh, please raise your hand so we can uh, notice. Well, I see Matt uh, is there. So uh, once, once we look at 33, uh, we'll, we'll come back. Okay, Mr. Ripple, you keep keep doing that. You don't have to change your screen for us to keep working on that. And if, if uh, Mr. Malou could be allowed to speak, I, I can ask him a question. Yep, and, I'll bring him in. And, and just stay focused on on finding the, the updated 33. So, so Mr. Malou, and I'm still not saying your last name correctly. I, I have no French in me whatsoever. I'm sorry, uh, Matt. Uh, uh, we were talking about uh, House Bill 30, House Bill 26, House Bill 2, Section 26. And this is one, uh, I don't know if you know it offhand, 
but it gave the uh, DHHS some flexibility in moving monies around from personnel lines to other lines, and that typically we would put an expiration date on that of the end of the biennium. And we have word that the governor's office wanted to go with the January 1, 2023 date for that um, expiration of authority. Do you, do you recall that? Can you explain to us what your reasoning was? Yes, Representative, and, and thank you for the question. Uh, this section is a prospective repeal that was first passed in Senate Bill 580 from 2018. The legislature during the last budget process opted to extend that prospective repeal for another biennium. What HB2 does, it extends it once again for 18 months. Um, if the legislature no longer wants to repeal this transfer authority, I would argue that we should eliminate the prospective repeal entirely if that's the prerogative. But the governor's office, our position was that it would take effect within this biennium rather than continuing to kick that date two years out at a time. So, so thank you for that background. While, while you were, um, uh, while we were uh, asking for you to come in, one of the observations we made, and, and I, I want to see if you share this thought, is that uh, in, in a period of constrained budgets, uh, this authority to transfer gives the DHHS leadership some flexibility that could help them navigate through budget constraints. That is correct, uh, Representative Edwards, and I can't speak to why this bill was brought forward in 2018, um, but it, it, did, it did become law, right? So clearly at one point, this legislature believed that this transfer authority should sunset. Um, and then again, the legislature subsequently delayed that by two years. And then uh, we've even proposed to delay it another 18 months. You're absolutely right that the department does utilize this unique transfer authority um, to move money between class lines in a way that other agencies aren't able to. And during a constrained budget session like the one we're in, that may be worthwhile. What I would argue is if the legislature's prerogative is to remove this prospective repeal or to delay this prospective repeal yet again for a whole biennium, it probably warrants a conversation as to whether or not this provision of law should remain on the books if it does not appear that it will ever actually take effect. Okay, will, will you uh, take a question from Representative Wallner? Be happy to. Representative Wallner? Thank, thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Matt, for being here. Um, I wondered why you picked 18 months instead of the full biennium. So our, and this was something of debate, right? We wanted to make sure the department did have a glide path to adopt to losing this transfer authority. You could argue that it should be the start of any given fiscal year. Um, our thinking was that by picking January 1st, if it did become apparent that this was a serious issue for the department to manage through by not having this transfer authority, our thinking was that the legislature would be in session at that point and could take quick action to reverse that repeal if necessary. If you do it on July 1, the legislature is not in session in most years, and let's hope we're not in session come July 1 this year either. Um, there's less of a window of opportunity to rectify the issue if it becomes operationally difficult for the department. So that was our thinking in picking January 1st. And again, the intention of putting this language into HB2 was that if this law is going to continue to exist on the books, it should take effect at some point rather than just kicking it out a whole biennium year, you know, year after year, if you will. Do you have a follow-up? Okay, I just, wouldn't we be in session and doing the budget during that period of January to, to June and at that point evaluate whether or not we wanted to include it in the next budget? So the legislature, 
the legislature the would be until June. Okay. And as part of that, right, as you're going through the budget for the next two years, you're experiencing in real time whether or not this is actually a substantial issue or not, right? Obviously, the legislature could reverse this through a bill that is not HB2. That this transfer. I lost you. Yeah, you're having some audio issues. Yeah. But I, th I, think that, that. I think he's answered my question. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for being here. Okay. Are there any other questions for Matt from the governor's office? Uh, I, I, I think your hand's still up, but you don't have a follow-up, Representative Warren. No, I'm... I'm yeah. All right. So... Uh, uh, and Mr. Chairman, just one last thing, if I may. Yes, sir. Is that, again, if the legislature does want to extend this for the full biennium, that's certainly within your prerogative. What I would say is maybe we eliminate the prospective repeal. Um, and I, I know Karen at HHS has articulated why this is important to the department. Uh, and I think just decide which direction we want to head and, and just decide to, you know, row in the same direction at that point. Okay, I, I'm going to listen to the committee members that have been around finance longer than I have. I, I happen to be predisposed to accepting the governor's recommendation on this, but I'm, I'm open to a discussion there. So, um, thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Ripple, were you able to find the new language and maybe with Matt here, uh, since we were saying that the governor's office looked at this language and approved replacement language, you could participate in that as well. Okay, Karen, can you explain uh, what you remember about why we thought the, the existing language in HB2 needed this amendment and what this amendment is trying to do? Sure. So the existing language in HB2 has a lot of unintended consequences. Um, uh, going back to, to TANF um, and the general funds being budgeted for the MOE all across the department, if, it, if it's not um, spent, then we need to move it and then we would replace it with a federal fund and the way that that language was written um, we would then have to lapse the general fund and we wouldn't have it available for moe because technically the federal fund supplanted it and that's just a one very small example um, so when i uh, talked to the governor's office about it they understood my concerns and were willing to uh, let me propose language that still uh, met what they were trying to obtain, which was um, just more transparency around when we uh, may be accepting an additional federal dollar that may offset a general fund dollar, um, and then what would happen with those general fund dollars. So that's what this language does. It puts in a reporting requirement that when we are doing a transfer or an accept and expend with fiscal committee, that uh, we are reporting about supplanted general fund dollars um, and reporting on how much of that is anticipated to lapse versus be used for other purposes. All right, so do we see a, a, a longer term opportunity to put any of this in an RSA or, or is this something that's gonna live forever in an HB2? So, I mean, certainly my preference where this is the first time we, we've done this would be to see how it goes because I don't, we haven't exactly figured out how we're going to report on it and what questions might come up. So my suggestion would be one biennium with it as it is, let's see how the reporting goes, what questions fiscal committee might have and then refine it if we need to. Representative Weiler, sir. I've forgotten which uh, section this replaces. 33. Thank you. 33 has got just a short five lines. 20% of it's a title. So uh, Matt, while, while you're on with us, do you, do you have any uh, interest in revising or extending Ms. Round's remarks? I would say that our office did consult with uh, Karen on this. Uh, we do agree 
section 33 of HB 2 as drafted is problematic uh, and we would support revising it to, to be the language that you see here on the screen. Are there any other questions from the committee members? Um, and let's just check real quick the audience, uh, the, the, just to see if there are any hands up. I, I, I doubt if there would be, but let's double check. Uh, are there any, I don't see any hands up. So, uh, so I would entertain a, a, a motion at this point to accept the draft language as shown on the screen as replacement language for section 33 of HB2. I moved. And is there a second? And then there's a second. Uh, moved by Irf, seconded by Weiler. Or is there any discussion on the motion? Not seeing any, uh, would the clerk take a roll? You're muted. Okay, on the question to amend section 33 as shown on House Bill 2, it is to accept the amendment. Representative Earth. Yes. Representative Weiler votes yes. Representative Bean. Yes. Representative Walner. Yes. Representative Nordgren. Yes. Representative Rogers. Yes. Representative Edwards. Yes. Mr. So Chairman, the vote is seven to zero to amend. Very good. Thank Except. you. Um, all right. So where are we? We are ready to take a look at section 38. So let me bring that up. Um, while I'm doing that, just so you know, I am going to have OLS draft that language that you just, just accepted in the form of a formal amendment with an amendment number and everything. So once that, yeah. I'll bring it, in, uh, bring it in for the committee to look at. All right. I, I think technically what you just told me is we should have done it the other way. I should have asked you to make, get OLS to make that amendment and then we'd vote on a formal amendment. Well, yes, but I didn't tell you that in time, so. Oh, you've told me before. I just, uh, I, I need to make the same mistake two or three times before I remember, so uh, not your fault. Thank you. Sure. Uh, so my note on 38 uh, said, this seems like a committee bill or should be under a current program already. Why is this a section HB2 section? The, the governor's office may be thinking this is a one-time deal. And maybe it was realized too late to put into HB1. And so my question was, do we drop it from HB2 or do we accept it? So, um, so this was a proposal that I think allowed care coordination out in the community by funding for an additional period of time, the transmission of what is called an ADT transaction or event out to receiving information systems around the state so that they would know if there was a discharge and they would know that a, uh, a patient was re-entering or transferring into their community. And the sum needed to continue those ADT transactions was $200,000. And it didn't, and this is 200,000 that did not find its way into HB1. So, um, so is that an, is that a accurate summation, Ms. Rounds? That is my understanding, yes. So this is something that we could move into HB1. Yeah, because I, 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 the, the program exists, right? You're already doing the ADT transactions. So this is just a, a funding of an ongoing operation, right? Yes. So that we could, we could drop it and, 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 care, and need to worry about it as something that's already potentially funded or needs additional funds for HB1. 
correct. The 200,000 would need to be in HB1. It would be in the Bureau of Information Services budget in class 37, I believe. So, so you'll, you'll help us find that line item later again, please, when I'm able to look at a spreadsheet maybe. But um, all right, so uh, is there any, are there questions from the committee on this? I, I mean, I think the, the momentum on this is that we want to delete this from HB2 because this is, a, this is an operational item, this program's already in operation, and this is just funds that are, can, need to be allocated internally to this uh, function. I'm not seeing any questions. Um, uh, Dave Wetters, is he coming in today or is that tomorrow? So that's tomorrow. Um, they, so he wants to bring, um, the commissioner for DOIT with him as well. And so they're uh, available between 10 and 12 tomorrow. And I'm not sure exactly what the plan is for tomorrow. I know there's also a fiscal committee meeting. Um, so I don't know if we could do it closer to 10. Um, okay. uh, I was just uh, thinking in my head whether we should go ahead and, and take a vote on this now. I, uh, or wait for his input, but I, it seems pretty straightforward to me. Um, I, I, I would entertain a motion to uh, delete section 38 from HB2. So I'll move. Mr. Ripple, second. Mr. Ripple oh, wants to- Mr. Ripple wants to change the number. I, I, no, I, I'm sorry. Before you continue with that, I, I would suggest that deleting anything as well as changing anything would also require an OLS amendment because in, in both cases, you're amending the bill. Okay, so um, do you want to take an action then to to draft an amendment to delete section 38, please? And then we can okay, vote on it when the amendment's ready? Yes. Representative Walner, do you have a question? Yes, I do. So is the uh, proposal here to delete it from House Bill 2 and we will add it in House Bill 1? That it will be covered. Okay, so the first half of that is is literally correct, and I agree with it. It would be this is an operational expense of an ongoing existing program, and and should be funded within HB one. When they built HB one, apparently they overlooked the funding requirements for this, and so so separately they are asking us to put two hundred thousand dollars into a line item in HB1 to support this ongoing program. So it's not in the governor's proposal. It's not in, I mean, you could argue that it's in the FY21 base because uh, it is an ongoing program. But, but it, it does appear to be a new demand for resources that is not currently reflected in the governor's budget proposal. Does that answer your question? Do you have a, a follow-up? Well, I guess I, yes, I do. I, I guess I don't quite understand. I went, so if we take it out of here and we don't do an amendment to House Bill 1 that adds it in, then they've lost it. Well, are they, we just have talked about giving them authority to reprogram pretty generously within line items. So, so it, they would be in a situation of a budget constraint where they would need to make priorities and maybe move some money around to cover this program. That sounded like this program was pretty important. So maybe it has a high enough priority to compete well internally, or we could add 200,000 more. Well, I think to me, it feels like we have to decide, do we want to fund this program or don't we? And this is the, sort of the spot. If we take it out of here and we don't put it in one, then the decision was that we didn't want to fund it. If we want to fund it and we want to put it where it should be appropriately, then we have to do something in House Bill 1, an amendment to House Bill 1, to make sure this money goes over to, ha to House Bill 1, uh, 1. Otherwise, the decision now if we don't do the, if we don't do something in House Bill One, the decision is we decided we didn't want to fund this particular item. Well, that we didn't want to provide dedicated funding 
we're, we're not telling them not to fund it either though. So we're sort of uh, would allow an internal transfer to cover it based on a departmental priority. But so, so we're not making any decision today because as Mr. Ripple correctly stated, he needs to draft an amendment with OLS and we're, we're not gonna take a vote on what to do with section 38 until we have an amendment and then we can discuss this again. So, but, so Ms. Rounds, would you, would you add this topic to Mr. Waters to come in and tell us about, because I wanna understand that 200,000, is that 100,000 a year? And that just seems like a boatload of money for an IT system that's already set up to trigger HL7 messages. I don't see that as being an, I don't, I don't understand an, an incremental cost to an existing IT function that should cost tens of dollars, not 200,000. So, so I, 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 if he could come back and explain why it would cost so much to maintain a HL7 transaction, that'd be great. Yes, I will ask him to also speak to that. Representative Nordgren, I wasn't ignoring you. I, if you have a question, please ask it. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna defer thirty eight, and we're going to add conversation um, from Mr. Waters to give us more uh, details on on justifying two hundred thousand for it. Um, I'm ready to move on to section thirty nine. This is uh, the the section that Representative Walner opened up to us on Monday. I, I don't think uh, anyone has submitted. A, a draft to uh, Mr. Ripple for us to vote on. In this it, case, you did, because you did discuss it the other day and there was some discussion about removing the section entirely. I did have an amendment drafted that I just literally just got from OLS uh, to delete this section. So if you were so inclined, you could vote on that. Okay, it's, it's good to have that flexibility. So so Representative Walner, uh, would, you, would you remind us what we said on Monday and, and what your current thinking is? Well, I, I think that <clears throat> what we talked about, what um, was your suggestion really actually of, of taking it out at this time and in April, some point in April when we have a little more time, uh, basically having a public information session where people can come in and talk to us about this section so that um, the House Finance Committee will have information to move forward. I mean, I think that my, my assumption was that we felt like there was a lot of information we needed and we, our time was getting, was getting short. So um, that, that was a suggestion you brought in and I thought it sort of made sense. Okay. And there, like I said, there were a number of bills floating around over the last three or four years about this. And this has been in the budget before and actually it's non-lapsing money from the uh, twenty, from the twenty twenty one budget that was in this line, um, and this does this particular proposal has bonding in the operating budget, and I think that is sort of a decision that is a serious one for the legislature to start down that down that path. We've been there before. Representative Nordgren, do you have follow-on questions? Or? Well, I just wanted to note, I, uh, one of the bills that I have written is Senate Bill 156. Kevin, can you refresh us on what that bill does, please? Senate Bill 156, I believe, inserted into the language that was in the trailer bill from two years ago, a provision uh, to prevent the department from contracting with a for-profit prison company to okay. either pay or run the facility. Okay, thank you. And I would also uh, second what uh, Representative Walner said. I think we have had this discussion already, but we need to remind ourselves that we're a little concerned that this isn't going through the capital budget process and public works. I think Representative Rogers also pointed out that she didn't think it had been a, a properly or fully coordinated with the city of Concord. And, and that, that struck me as something that ought to be done. 
So, um, okay. So I, I think we should entertain a motion to, uh, can you show the amendment on the screen, Mr. Ripple? Yep, let me just bring that up. Oh, there's Representative Rogers. Would you go ahead? And while you're bringing that on the screen, Representative Rogers, do you have a question? I just wanted to comment. You had talked about the city. I did, in fact, talk to the mayor, and um, he said that that neither he nor the um, city manager had been um, contacted about this, and um, they wanted they would would very much like to be contacted and talk, have some involvement with the planning of this, and we're what's going on with it. So I would hope that um, the department would make sure that that happens in the future. So if we could send a strong message to the department, um, it doesn't need to necessarily be in the amendment, but I would hope that um, you as the chairman of this division might help send a, a strong message to the department that that's something we'd like to see happen. Okay, well, I, I think with the department listening in on the hearing and, and and I think hearing us all basically say the same thing uh, after this vote, they may have a, a, a big part of the message. Thank you very much. There, um, was a, there was a meeting scheduled for 316. I'm not sure who it was with at the city of Concord, but there was a meeting scheduled. And I don't know that it happened, but that was the information that I got. Karen, I would just ask that somebody contact the mayor and the city manager's office as well, okay. I don't think that they've been contacted. It's been at a lower level, but okay. Thank you. I will. Thank you. So, Representative Weiler, do you, do you have any comments, sir? Before before I call for a motion, I do not. So, I'd entertain an, a motion to adopt Amendment Twenty Twenty One Dash Zero Eighty Nine Zero Hotel. So moved. I'll second. All right. uh, is there any discussion on this amendment? Not, not seeing any. Uh, uh, Mr. Clerk, would you take a roll? Representative Earth. Yes. Representative Weiler votes yes. Representative Bean. Yes. Representative Walner. Yes. Representative Nordgren. Yes. Representative Rogers. Yes. Representative Edwards. Yes. Seven to zero. All right. Um, very good. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Representative Walner, for getting more organized than I did to, to lead us through that conversation. I appreciate it. Um, thank you. So, so looking ahead at tomorrow, uh, we have some, some sections uh, that we're, we're going to talk about in, in more detail, but, but let's, let's sort of uh, headline them. Um, Mr. Ripple, can you, can you get us back to HB2 section 34, please? Sure. And then, and then we're just going to just briefly look at 34, 35, 37, 41. Okay, so there's an amendment coming in on section 34 reproductive health facilities. It's going to, the amendment's going to be introduced by Representative Erica Leon. Uh, I believe the following. I believe everyone's been sent on the committee has been sent the amendment, and I believe that this has been posted on the LBA website. And I know that I mentioned to um, Kayla. Montgomery of Planned Parenthood that she may want to uh, listen in tomorrow morning. Uh, so, um, uh, so do you have, so, so, so is it, can you confirm Mr. Ripple that this did get on the LBA website? The yes, it is. Representative Norgren, question? I, I'm sorry, but um, could Kevin maybe resend the amendment that she's bringing in? I, sure. I don't know where I have it. Thanks. It's only one of the 400 emails that you have in there. Uh, so I can't, I, I can't keep track either. It's just so much. Um, section 35. Uh, what was this about? This was, oh, this is about the A and M study and having $10 million. 
I think I've heard from Ms. Rounds that this A&M report has been completed and that we've been sent a copy. And that this is one of the big things that I have been wanting to read or look at, but I personally have not done that. Can, can we confirm that this A&M report is completed and has been emailed to us? Is that, is, that, is that true? It has been emailed to you and it's also posted on our website. Okay, and then uh, for anyone who's looked at it, I'm just curious, did, is that $10,043,000 for the biennium, is that backed up by the report for the people who have looked at the report or, or, or is that an estimate that needs to be refined? Do we know? Mr. Uh, Representative Weiler? I don't remember seeing it specifically in the report, but saw it later in another form. The report was actually four reports, and you know, there was a lot of repetition in all of them, but there were several places where they showed savings if the department would, would file their paperwork a little differently so they could get more federal funds. And so I'm, I'd like to ask Ms. Rounds, who's maybe done more thorough adding up of all those little sections. If those savings, if they were followed, would amount to at least 10 million. I not. So let's be yeah. fair to you. We're, we're not really discussing this until tomorrow, I think. Yeah. I think uh, so you got 24 hours to kind of stick your nose into that. Yeah, let me, let me think about it. Let me think about it. Do you understand the question? I do, I do. And it, it, I think it applies to a couple of different sections of their report. So uh, um, let, me, let me think. I, Representative Weiler asked very, about a very specific finding, but I think all of the findings, there's definitely an ROI, but I, I'd rather wait till tomorrow when I have some of the AM, AM folks available um, so they can talk to you about what they found because they, they were really independent in their review. Okay. Representative Weiler, you have a follow-up? Yeah, that, and also you have to uh, figure out where the overlap is because here's two different sections for the first uh, time period and then two different sections for the second time period. You know, the recommendations in the, in the first section for the first time period, the same as the recommendations in the second report on the same time period I didn't have the patience to read all the many pages in the detail and make notes in the margin, but I was just kind of glancing through and I did see that there was quite a bit of repetition in what I saw with two reports in each of the two time periods. Thank you. Chair, if you would like what, I, what we could do starting off tomorrow is have A&M give like a five minute overview of, of what they did and, and their, what they reviewed, if that would be helpful. It, you know, it would. I, just to talk about tomorrow, I, I, uh, I, I, I've told uh, Representative Leon already that uh, Section 34 would be the first up in the batting order. And I'm anticipating that that's probably going to take at least an hour right there. So if you wanted to give the A&M people a heads up, it, we, it's probably about 1030 at the earliest before we we come to 35. Okay, and it'll probably be a little after that because we have to talk to the MMIS folks uh, around that time next because that's the only time they're available tomorrow. Oh, this is really good to know. You should tell me when I have to talk to MMIS. Yeah, it, because... it should be right after 34. We should do those folks. They're going to join at 10 o'clock, so they'll be available as soon as we're done with 34. We may have to, we may have to recess 34 for a little while. I don't know that I want to do that, but if that's only when they're available. Um, okay, so, so, so it, with Representative Weiler's question about an ROI being associated with some of this, if it's going, if it's going to reduce and an, uh, produce a net reduction, like in FY23, to where 
Yeah, yes, it's about $5 million, but we're going to get an ROI of $3 million. You're only asking for $2 million of new cash in FY23. That's just an example. But yes. if, if, it's, if it's that kind of analysis, then would you make sure that we understand the net? Because yeah. we're, we're already into the gray zone where, where we're looking for money. I can absolutely do that. I have an idea sure. of, uh, pardon me? We want to be sure that those recommendations can, in fact, be accomplished without finding out from the department that it's impossible to do. Understood. So, so that's a that's a preview of coming attractions on section thirty five tomorrow. So let's go to section thirty seven for another preview. Um, Now these grants to senior citizens, this feels like it's an existing program. I, I, I thought we talked uh, uh, in the long-term care supports about a program that had this function, supporting services to combat struggles with mental health and social isolation, including but not limited to grants for safety upgrades and other capital improvements to improve their facilities. I. I, is, so, so I guess tomorrow I would like confirmation of whether or not this is a new program or an existing program. And if it's an existing program, is this capital money? Because we're talking about capital improvements. And if it's operating money and an and existing program, why isn't it already an HB1? Did, did you follow so all that? Yes, and I think this is one that you uh, as a committee had a question out to the governor's office on because the governor's office added this provision. Um, so we really needed them to speak to it. So let's, let's see what my notes is. Why is this a sec HB section, HB2 section? The governor's office may be looking at this as a one-time thing. I, is, do we still have Matt on? And if we don't, can we ask him to come back at around uh, one o'clock tomorrow to, to talk to this section? He's not in the audience, but yes, I can ask him to come back tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Section 43. Is there a section 43? 41, that's my eye. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Which section? Oh, section 41. I, I said 43 because my eye is, my left eye is problematic and was blurring up. So section 43, uh, I have meant to follow up with Representative McGuire because she said that historically there was a reason to not move the controlled drug prescription health and safety program into DHHS. And, uh, and, and so this HB2 could potentially be problematic because it's circumventing uh, a specific legislative decision from a year or two ago, I think. So, so this is my rem reminder to contact Representative McGuire. Uh, Representative Norgren, it looks like you may wanna say something. No? Yes, go ahead. Representative Norgren, you're on mute. Okay, I, I don't, I, I'm gonna assume that I, I misinterpreted your hand motion there. Um, Representative Walner. This section, is division one looking at this section also? Uh, Division one originally had the section, uh, but they asked uh, Division three to take it instead. Okay, so they don't have it. They didn't make any. They didn't make any comments on it or give us any ideas about how they felt about it. I'm not aware of any comments from Division one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get some background from uh, Representative McGuire and then Rep Ms. Rounds, if you could uh, re-remember the 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 argument, the uh, institutional argument for moving it, that'd be great. Uh, Representative Wilner, your hand is still up. Do you have a follow up, ma'am? I do have a question that I want to ask you when we get through um, all of these okay. sessions. Okay. okay. Representative Nordgren, do you have a question? Yes. Yeah, I think I had a note that the question was about the Office of Professional Licensing in Division One. So I think that's the clarification we need. What, what clarification would you like made? Uh, help me well, understand that. I think the issue was Division One deals with the Office of Professional Licensing. So the question that I had written was, should they have seen this? And I guess that's something we're going to check on. Thank you. I, I, I think I think the answer I just heard from uh, Representative Weiler was that that they they can that the Division One chair considered this and asked that Division Three take the lead on it. And so they've not come to any determination because they passed it to us. Is that is that a correct assumption, Representative Weiler? Yes. So um, is this a good time to take your question, Representative Walner? Well, when I ask the question, you can tell me if it's a good time or not. Okay. So um, I do, I have an amendment um, that I would like to bring in. It's a House two, um, House Bill 2 amendment. What would be the appropriate time for me to bring that in? So let me just check its status. If, if, has Mr. Ripple had an opportunity to get OLS to, pr pr to create a, a, uh, an amendment document for us to vote on? Yes, he has. It's, it uh, address a specific section that's already in HB2 or does it add something? It really addresses a section that's in HB1. But, I, but we, we sort of went back and forth. Mr. Ripple and I talked about whether it should be in House Bill 1 or House Bill 2. Um, I think we came down on the side of House Bill 2, but would be open to hearing other people's ideas about it. It has to do with a line in House Bill 1. Okay. I, I think if you're ready to talk about it, we could talk about it now. But uh, let me check with Representative Weiler. He's got his hand up. And, yeah, Representative Weiler. No, I just I thought I lowered it. Thank you. All right. So I don't want to put you on the spot, though, Representative Walner. If you're not prepared <laughs> in this instant to talk about it, we can maybe come back after lunch. Yeah, I just the only thing I need to find is the page in House Bill One because we'll have to use. I think to make to have this make sense people will need to use both documents. So if you want to do it after lunch, I can have all the um, right lines and everything ready. Yes, ma'am. I, I want to continue previewing tomorrow uh, to talk about sections 24, 25, 106, 110. So if you happen to be able to get ready to talk about it while we're doing the previews, you know, let me know and, 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 and we'll uh, offer okay. you some time. Okay, good. Representative I can, I can be ready. Representative Rogers, you have your hand up. Yes, um, I have an interest also in that. Um, I believe I'm not positive, but I believe that um, we had all talked about the Sununu Center and possibly amending something there. But um, there again, I believe that would go in House Bill Two. But I'm not sure where in um, in House Bill One what what amount we're using as our base amount. Um, <clears throat> I was wondering if, if you or Representative Earth could maybe explain to me where or how I can find out what base amount for a figure we're using for the Sununu Center. If we're using the 12.5 million, if we're using 14.5, if we're using less than that or whatever, and um, if you or anyone else has, has got an amendment or somebody should be working on an amendment or where we stand on that. 
So I'm kind of throwing open that question while we're previewing future actions on House Bill 2. Okay, so the most, we, we can do all of that. The, the biggest chunk of what you said that has the biggest impact, I think, is uh, the question, has anyone done an HB2 amendment related to the Sununu Center? And I can tell you, I'm not aware of any. Uh, if uh, Representative Weiler, sir, do you, do you have a comment on that? Not on the Sununu Center per se. I think we should put something in there to to uh, give <clears throat> and then shut it down and give them a year to figure out what they need and then cut the budget way down so that they realize we're serious. But I'm going back to uh, number 41. Uh, we need to alert uh, HHS because this would be a whole uh, AU or uh, appropriating unit. I mean, you have to have all the figure out how many people they'd need and all that sort of thing. And it would be a whole page in HB1. So we got to give them a, a heads up if we're going to uh, accept this because it basically belongs in HB1 with a new AU once we accept it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'm assuming that it would be total over to the overall budget of the state. It would be budget neutral because it's an existing program that would be laterally moved into DHHS and that the changing the finances would be mechanics that would happen in background is my guess. Rep or, uh, Ms. Um, Browns, do you, do you have a comment about that or Mr. Ripple? I'm sorry, I had to step away for, for okay. so I 90 think what, seconds. Uh, okay, so, so we, of course we named you while you were away. Uh, <laughs> so, so, the, uh, so the, I think the, uh, to phrase Representative Weiler's comment is if we accept section 41, that would cause DHHS to need to create new accounting units and codes and, and it would have to be in HB1 that way. And, and my assumption is that this is an existing program that and all of the manpower and money is, would be a lateral over uh, later as kind of an administrative action. That's correct. We, we brought over the program exactly how it was um, budgeted by OPLC and it is already uh, showing in HB1 in our budget. Oh, it already is. So you're assuming that we're going to approve this. Correct. If it doesn't, then it, if this is removed, then um, the budget would get moved back over to OPLC. All right. Do you have a follow up, Representative Weiler? Well, are you saying all we have to do is accept this and it's a done deal? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Could you scroll up, uh, Mr. Ripple, to section 24? This is the county cap issue. Uh, I think Representative Earth has, and I, and others have done uh, a lot of work in this area. Uh, and we talked about it yesterday as we were trying to do some add backs. Oh, I'm going to stop myself. Representative Rogers, you had two parts to your question. We talked about the, uh, the Sununu Center for just a moment, but didn't finish it. I don't know of any HB2 recommendations on, on, uh, on uh, the Sununu Center. And, 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 and at this point, is there anyone in the committee that has asked Mr. Ripple to draft an HB2 for the Sununu Center? Or Mr. Ripple, can you just tell us yes or no if anyone's asked you to draft such an amendment? No one has asked me to draft that amendment as of now. Okay, so, so, so Representative Rogers, if you think that it needs to be amended, and you probably would not be alone, uh, you know, feel free to uh, get a group of people together to figure out what you want to say and, and let's say it. Uh, is, that, is that okay? All right. Thanks. 
And then I think you asked uh, another question in there about where could you find the Sununu Center in Representative Earth's document? And I believe if you uh, use that search bar in the upper right hand corner to look at the either its account code or the name Sununu, it, it, it should come up for you. And, and I am assuming that the, that the, the current uh, baseline that would go into our proposed HB1 amendment at this point is their FY21 numbers. Um, so, so not adjusted uh, for FY, not, not added to in 22 and 23, but just what they were at the end of FY21. Representative Erf, are you still there? I'm still here, sir. Okay, can you confirm my assumption that for the Sununu Center, uh, right now we're planning to maintain the FY21 adjusted baseline? Um. <laughs> and I guess the answer is yes. That's the plan. We, we didn't add any back yesterday. We didn't. So, That's correct. so, so using the algorithm, you used the, the lower of the governor's number or FY21. And I assume the FY21 was lower. So that's the number that we're planning on at this point. Yes. And the algorithm, I would have applied the algorithm. That is correct. I'm not sure off the top of my head which way it went, but that sounds reasonable. Okay. Uh, Representative Weiler, comment question? Mr. DeJoy wants a meeting later today, and uh, he sent me a Zoom link. Link. I think he has a suggested amendment for the Sununu Center, so we'll see what he's got. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. I, I asked him for an agenda for that 2.30 call, and, and he just said he wanted to clear up some confusion. And I, I was hoping for something more specific than that, but I guess we'll find out at 2.30 what, what he thinks we're talking about. Because I'm confused, <laughs> maybe. Maybe that I'm the first one to clear up. So Re Representative Rogers, I, I belatedly, did we get to your uh, answers to your question? Um, yes, thank you very much. Okay. So, uh, so section 24, there's a whole uh, discussion here that we'll have tomorrow on the county cap and uh, Representative Earth, uh, we talked about it a bit yesterday, uh, I think, we are proposing to do some add backs to the, the, this line item and that those add backs would keep the rate of increase at a 3% level. We've talked about it, what it would cost at a 2% level, but, but I, I think right now the proposal is, is somewhere in between there, 2 and 3%. And with the idea that an HP2 could be crafted to, um, to lock in future growth at a 3% rate. Is, is that an accurate summation of your proposed HB2 representative Earth that we would keep it at uh, the HB2 line would say, keep it at 3% ongoing? Uh, we can go either way. Um... I thought we'd talked about lowering to 2%, but I am working with Kevin to get that amendment together so we can send that out so people will be able to review it and then we can vote on it, I guess, next week. Okay, but tomorrow you have time on the agenda to talk about it in section, when we talk about section 24. I can certainly speak to the amendment tomorrow for sure. Yes, I assume yeah. Kevin got it ready by then. Thank you, I know you have it ready. I know Kevin. Well, and if OLS can produce an amendment, we could maybe vote on it. And that is with OLS now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, section 25. Thank you, Representative. Uh, prospective repeal regarding eligibility of services extended. Um, we said we needed to talk about this. That's my dog. If you can hear that. Okay, so we talked about 
this this repeal, I guess, yesterday, and uh, and uh, and we have some more comments on it. But but bottom line, I think this section. 25 becomes uh, overcome by events because uh, in talking to Representative Marsh of HHS, he says that he, uh, and he quoted it to me, but I, I don't have the, um, the, the link to it. He quoted me RSA language that will become effective on July 1, and that RSA language would make section 25 uh, moot. And therefore, uh, it sounded like we could uh, delete section 25. So, so could you have OLS prepare an amendment? Delete 25, and then we'll talk about it in more detail tomorrow. Sure. Okay. I suppose everyone would be okay deleting this if, if in fact, it's going into an RSA with a, a projected effective date. So, um, all right. So, um, footnotes. There's, um, I think, on the order of 32 footnotes, uh, and there's a, a document that's floating around that lists them in sort of uh, a grid format uh, and shows where the footnotes are throughout the HB1. Uh, and so there's just an issue of making sure that uh, we've, we've, we've looked at each other and we like these footnotes. So, so Mr. Ripple, would you remind me if those, that footnote document, you sent that to all the members, right? I believe I did, yes. And is that also listed as its own document on the LBA website or would that have been considered redundant since the footnotes are in HB1? I'm not sure if we have that one on the website or not. Let me take a look. It is. It is, okay. So if you guys want to prepare yourself for that, uh, you could look at the footnotes and the foot, uh, uh, that document and figure out if you want to accept the footnotes or if you have a change you want to make. Um, I, I think this morning I asked Mr. Ripple to get Mr. Hoffman to create a, a short list for us. And I would describe the short list of being, assuming FY19 is the baseline, what footnotes got added in the current budget or and or are proposed for the, for the uh, governor's budget. And, and Mr. Hoffman has not had a chance to do that because that we just talked about that this morning. But do you think you might have that tomorrow? Yes, we'll have that by tomorrow. So, so he's showing you what document we're talking about. Yes, this is just the one showing footnotes in the governor's recommended 22-23 budget. Thank you. And then if you could go to sections 106 through 110 of the HB2, we, we might actually do more than just look at these to, today as a, as a preview. So sections 106 through 110 were submitted by uh, the Veterans Home um, you know, as, as a, as a, if I were a purist, I would be bothered by these sections because there's a little bit of internal redundancy where the same thing is repeated in two of the uh, sections and that, uh, there's some redundancy also where one of these sections, uh, says something that's already in the footnotes. So it's redundant in that regard. And so if I were really fastidious, it would be a big deal to me to clean up 106 to 110 to get it clean and, and lined up. Um, but given all the work that Mr. Ripple is doing, I, I, I don't know if there's a lot of benefit now to do it because 
it, it, it has it has no negative effect except it's it's unnecessary redundancy and and just not clean. So um, so I guess what I'm saying is I think I I would be willing to just accept sections 106 through 1 110 knowing that they're not technically clean, um, but that they're not going to do any harm. It's okay. Um, if anyone disagrees with that, you know, this is actually a good time to say something because um, it would require Mr. Ripple and uh, LBA to do some, or the OLS to do some work. Uh, and the value of that work, I think, is marginal. Um, it, 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 are there any questions or comments on this? So, so let's try it this way. I would I would entertain a motion to accept sections 106 through 110 as written in HB2. I would move that. Are we really just asking Kevin though to produce the amendment first and then actually vote on it tomorrow? No, in this case, we're just going to accept 106 through 110 and not ask him to do an amendment okay. because so moved. Second by Representative Weiler. Is there a discussion? So, so I, I, I'll discuss it just one more time to summarize my thinking. 106 through 110 are fine. If with them in HB2, uh, it, 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 it gives the Veterans Home some flexibility. From a technical writing perspective, there's some redundancy that could be cropped out of this, but that redundancy isn't going to cause us any problems in the next biennium. Maybe it can be fixed next next time around. Um, that's my discussion. I, I, I'm predisposed to accepting the motion, voting for the motion. Is there any other discussion? Okay, Mr. Clerk, would you call a roll? Representative Irv. Yes. Representative Weiler votes yes. Representative Bean. Yes. Representative Walner. Yes. Representative Nordgren. Yes. Representative Kath uh, Catherine Rogers. Yes. Representative Edwards. Yes. Mr. Chairman, the vote seven to zero. Oh, super. Thank you. Um, there were a couple of other sections that I think we might have been ready to accept today. Can, can you take us back to section 30 and 31? Sure. Where Francesca Hennessy came in and explained to us um, that, that, that these are good uh, as is. Uh, I didn't sense any disagreement with her while she was briefing it. So I think we could entertain a motion to accept sections 30 and 31 as written in HB2. So moved. Oh, Representative Norgren has a question. Oh, does she? I don't see it. Representative Norgren, do you have a question? No, she doesn't. So you've moved it and uh, Representative Weiler seconded it. Um, is there any discussion on sections 30, 31? Not seeing any. Uh, Mr. Uh, Clerk, would you call a roll? Representative Earp. Yes. Representative Weiler votes yes. Representative Bean. Yes. Representative Walner. Yes. Representative Nordgren. Yes. Representative Rogers. Yes. Representative Edwards. Yes. So chairman, the vote is seven to zero. Okay, thank you. So, um, so we've accepted those. All right, uh, and then going back to a preview for tomorrow, uh, it, last but not least is sometime during the day, we're hoping to get a ways and means update. Uh, and I'm, I'm hoping that it means good things. So uh, are, are, is there any comment or question about that? Uh, Representative Irf. 
Not about that. I, after you're done with that. Okay. For, uh, I don't see any on that topic. So go ahead. Uh, Kevin sent us all a list of the remaining funds or items, I guess, in the governor's budget that don't that don't use general funds. So maybe that could be on the agenda for tomorrow as well, just to say, okay. Oh, nice catch. Beautiful catch. So let's let so um, excellent catch. Mr. Ripple, would you pull that up? The document you sent to us this morning? Sure. Explain what explain what it is. Or I think since Representative Murphy asked for it, I think. Do you want to explain what it is? Uh, sure. Just one second. I'm going to have to budget a better, faster computer for you, Mr. Ripley. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> well, let me try. Let me try it a different way. Just a second here. And then before we hang up for the attendees and the audience, if, if you have any words of wisdom or something you want to say, and you can keep it to a couple of minutes, uh, we'd, we'd love to hear from you before we go. So stand by. Mr. Chair, while he's looking can tonight, I can I let you know one other scheduling piece of information for tomorrow? Please. Um, I will need to log off by uh, two or maybe a little after two tomorrow. So Mary Calise will be uh, with you after two o'clock tomorrow to fill in for me. Good. We'll try not to teach, treat her like a substitute teacher. And she'll try not to beat you up too much too. So don't worry. Okay. Be mutual. So I, I think Ms. Rounds today, I, I, I'd have to look at my notes more thoroughly, but I think in about four places on sections we're anticipating talking about tomorrow, four or five places, we asked you specifically to, to go drill into the numbers a little bit. Yes. Uh, okay, so, so, so help remind me to, to have you talk to all of them before uh, your time runs out with us. Sure, thank you. Please, please, thank you. Okay. So Representative Earth, what are we looking at? I just wanna ask Kevin a little, one question. The spreadsheet looks a little different than this, but I assume it's just the same numbers looking differently? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, that's fine. So what I asked uh, Mr. Rebel to do was to go, as the other day he went through all of the accounts that had only federal funds, and we voted to accept those from the governor's budget. In going through the budget, there are many other accounts that do not have general funds. They might be agency funds only. They might be uh, private funds only. They might be revolving funds only. So I asked them to pick out all the other accounts that have no general funds in them so that we could just consider them for approval as the governor has budgeted them, I guess, tomorrow. I have not had a chance to go through the, the entire list yet, but I was planning to do it later. I think there are 32 of them, aren't there? Or some number like that? Can you go to the bottom? 32. And and when I looked at them, I, I didn't see any issues, but I'm the most junior on the committee. So um, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't see any issue or, or problem just accepting these uh, for our proposed HB1 amendment, accepting these into the amendment. Do, do you, do you, Mr. Or Representative Irf, do you, 
Because no. you, you haven't had a chance to look at the document you requested, would you like to defer voting on it? No. It, it, does he need to prepare an amendment or is this the amendment? Well, I think we're letting him know that we want this to go into the HB1 amendment, kind of like we did for the federal. Right. right. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine with that. If everybody else is. So, Mr. Ripple, what, what's the right way to tell you that we want this captured in House Bill 1 amendment? Well, I think there's no way to do it, no reason to do an amendment because in this case, you're approving accounts that are already in House Bill 1. Um, but as you did with the federal funds only accounts, you could certainly opt to vote to approve this just to, just to have a record of the committee's approval. So uh, I'd entertain a motion to accept these 32 line items uh, into um, the, H, the Division Three budget proposal. So moved. Second. Seconded by Representative Weiler. Uh, Mr. Roll, would you, or excuse me, uh, is, is there any discussion on this? I, I don't want to railroad anyone. Could, could we go back and look at the middle of them? So like from 24 at the bottom to 12 or whatever it's going to be? Okay, so so now you've, I think you've like glanced at all three pages. Um, a little out of sequence, but that's what they are. All right, uh, Representative Weiler. Uh, so, can I see the total is 319 million? That's neither general fund nor federal funds? That's right, there, there are some big ones on here. For example, the uh, Medicaid enhancement tax revenue that's budgeted for uncompensated care up at the top and the equip revenue that's budgeted for uh, uh, in long-term supports and services right below that. So these aren't all inconsequential accounts by any means. And that makes sense. Those, those taxes are big. Thank you. Yep. Is there any more discussion? We have a, a motion on the floor. Any more discussion? Not seeing any. Mr. Clerk, would you take a roll? The motion is to accept these 32 line items into the Division Three budget proposal. Representative Earth. Yes. Representative Weiler votes yes. Representative Bean. Yes. Representative Walner. Yes. Representative Nordgren. Yes. Representative Rogers. Yes. Representative Edwards. Yes. Mr. Chairman, the vote is seven to zero. Thank you very much. And, um, Thank you, Mr. Ripple, for putting that together and, and Representative Irv for, for thinking about it. I, I, I like the fact that we're shrinking the amount of moving parts. Um, so uh, I, at this point, have uh, think that we've accomplished what I thought we could accomplish today. We have more time available, but because um, tomorrow is going to be a busy day and I think it's going to take folks some, some, some independent time to read and, and get ready for some of these things. I, I'd, be, I'd be open to uh, having folks have, take a, an independent work afternoon and not be in work session. Representative Walner, do you have a question? Uh, well, I am ready with my amendment, if, but I'm willing to wait until tomorrow. I, I, I want to do it now because tomorrow is full. If, uh, if, and, yeah. and we're, not, we're not at lunchtime now. If you're ready, let's do it. Okay, great. Okay, so you probably need to take a um, look at your House Bill 1 and go to page 950 of the governor's budget. Mr. Ripple, can you okay. share that? Just again, I like, I like making sure we're all looking at the same thing. Or normally I would uh, take a bio break here, but I, I, this feels like it's going to be done in about 15 minutes. Is that your estimate, Representative Wolner, or do you think it's going to be yes, longer? Uh, no, unless there's a lot of questions, I can do it, I think, in 15 minutes. Easy. Okay, so if you go, if you take a look at 
uh, class line 536, which is called Employment Related Child Care. And I think if you remember the other night at the public hearing, there were a number of people who spoke to this line. So you can see that between um, 2021 and then what the governor proposes is quite a, a quite an a, a amount of less funding. And the real concern here from the childcare community is that, um, you know, during the pandemic, it's been really hard to gauge how many children would be in childcare, how many childcare centers would be open, how many childcare providers would be available. So it has been really hard to come up with um, estimates of how much childcare is gonna be needed when we get past this, um, how quickly will we go back to where we were before? Um, so my suggestion is instead of adding money, funds to the line, I'm suggesting a way that, and I'll show you the amendment that I'm suggesting to a House Bill 2, I'm suggesting a way that if we start drawing down the $26 million, if we start drawing down rapidly, because people are going to go back to work. And I think that's our goal. We want people back to work. We, we don't want people to um, have to stay home and it, apply for state, state services. So uh, we want people to go back to work. So as that draws down, if we get to the point where um, in either at, towards the end of um, 22 or towards the end of 23, um, there would be, those lines would be out of money. And all of a sudden everyone would lose their reimbursement or have to go onto a wait list that we have a way of monitoring that and then uh, transferring from the TANF reserve money into those lines. So let maybe we could show the um, maybe we could show the amendment, Kevin. Sure. Can you give us a second to read this? I I I just would like to read the words. Okay. Okay, I, I've read it. Is, is, uh, are other people ready to, for, go ahead, Representative Walner, continue. Okay, well, um, so the TANF Reserve Fund, there are only certain things that you can use the TANF Reserve for. And one of those is childcare, because obviously um, getting families back to work and not on TANF, temporary assistance to needy families, is a goal that the department has, but I think it is a goal shared by probably most of the people in New Hampshire that families should be working and supporting their families. So um, without childcare though, if you have a young family, it's really, it's hard, it's hard to do that. So the um, childcare, employment related childcare um, program helps families, low income, they're, they're very low income families, low income families uh, be able to afford childcare. It's a, they call it a scholarship program. It's basically a subsidy. Uh, parents pay a part and the state, pay, state and federal government pay a part. Um, so what this does is basically um, safeguards that if we get to like May and we're out of money, we don't have to say, to families, okay, no more money, no more money for childcare. So families may lose their jobs. They may have to 
stay home. I mean, there's, and um, I don't think that's what any of us want to have a childcare wait list. And then families that needed care would have to go onto wait lists. So I don't think that's what we want. Um, and like I said, the TANF reserve is pretty specific about what, um, what it can be used for. And childcare is one of those things that the federal government um, encourages states to use um, the TANF, the, um, TANF funding for childcare. So um, do people have questions? Yeah, oh yeah, I just was waiting for you to uh, finish with your, okay. So uh, we have Representative Weiler and then Representative Verf. I just wanna look and see the amendment numbers to put it in the record. Plus, I think this is brilliant. So this doesn't add any new money. It just uses no. money that's available for us. Thank you very much. No, it does not ask for additional funds. It only asks that if we start to run out and we, you know, we may not run out the first year. We don't know. We have no way of predicting really how many families or how quickly families are going to go back to work after having lost their employment or been at home with their children during the pandemic. So um, I hear from providers that people are already starting to come back and they're starting to go back to work. And these, I wanna remind you that these are low wage workers. Um, these are people in jobs that are hands-on jobs. These are not people who are gonna stay home and be on a computer. These are people who um, are nursing assistants, um, aides in nursing homes, uh, working in restaurants. These are people who are going to really have to go out of the home and get back to work. Representative Irv. I think this is an outstanding amendment. Uh, the TANF fund was originally budgeted to be down to, I believe, like $14 million by the end of this year. And because there hasn't been a need to draw it down for the last couple of years, it's much higher than that. I think it's up over $40 million. So the TANF fund certainly has the capacity to support what Representative Walner has proposed. This is absolutely outstanding. I appreciate the support. Thank you. Well, so Representative Walner, that would all be too easy. So, so let me yeah. let me throw the frog in the punch bowl. Uh, so, so I, I love the concept. I, I think it's a great idea. My only issue with it is it reads a little bit like we're signing a blank check. And, and just I'll, I'll, I'll draw your attention to, to two words that I would like to have you consider changing. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not asking you, I don't tell any, I'm just asking you to consider changing them. And line four, the word fully. So I would like to just see the word fully deleted to where it okay. reads to, to, to fund employment related okay. childcare services to avoid a wait list. Okay. Okay. The word fully um, is, is, is just kind of adds a level of extremeness that I don't really know the upper gauge to that, the upper end. We're of not it, so. trying to be extreme. We're just trying to make sure there isn't no. a wait list. Right. And, and so uh, then the other one is on line five, towards the end of that line five, where you use the shall. Uh, I, I, would, I would like to see the word may, um, just because I, I'm a little less directive than some people. I, I would like the management of DHHS to have the flexibility knowing what we want them to do. But you know, if for some reason they're having problems, I, I don't want to be compelling them to do something that doesn't make sense. So, so I, I, would, I would ask that the word shall on line five be change to may and that the word fully on four be deleted. Do you want to think about that overnight? I can certainly agree. Just... I, I agree with fully. I want to think about shall. And I will tell you that I've had conversations with the department about this amendment. Um, they're, they're very supportive of it. I have um, also talked with um, Karen Rounds about it and she was supportive of it. And I talked to um, the people who manage the, um, the childcare program and they, they 
felt comfortable with it. And um, especially as we go into these times when we don't know what's gonna happen for um, children needing to come back to childcare. So let, let me think about the may and shall. I understand, I, under, I certainly understand that and I will, um, I will um, maybe get back to you with the final tomorrow. Or, or just call me if, if, you, if you come to, you know, think about it because I'm just giving you my first reaction also because okay. I've not read the language until 10 minutes ago. So yep. you're, you're, you're getting sort of my first blush response. So uh, Ms. Rounds, do you, do you have a comment, question? Yes, um, I think it, it goes to, um, to your comment about, um, about it not being a blank check, if you will. There are federal regulations as to how much TANF we can transfer to CD, CCDF. Um, so we, uh, there would be about another $6 million over what has already been budgeted in TANF that we could transfer to CCDF. Um, so, you know, I think a possibility would be to just add um, to the extent allowed by federal regulation and that I mean, it wouldn't be a blank check anyways, and we would have to follow the federal regulation anyway, but it, it would just draw that attention to it's not a blank check. Yeah, so, so I would be happy that way too. If, if the language of this section uh, stated what the, what, the, what the guardrails were for um, spending a little tighter. Okay, I will, I will work with Kevin to reword that, okay? That'd be great. Okay, great. And I yeah. would just say we are in support of it. It, it doesn't, it works for us. Okay, so, um, so we're gonna, what, what are we gonna, uh, we'll call that the, uh, the, 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 the Walner babysitting money or something. No, don't, please don't <laughs> call it babysitting, please. Childcare, okay. <laughs> employment related I, child care. I just can't call it a scholarship. I, I'm having I, trouble with that's it. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> you don't have to call it scholarship. All right. All right. So, um, okay. So we'll talk about that again tomorrow. Uh, and uh, if you want to work or work with uh, Mr. Ripple to get the wording right, Ms. Rounds, maybe Ms. Rounds, you could you could take the first shot at writing something so it comports to federal regulations. I, I don't, I think just adding um, as allowed by federal regulation is fine. I don't think I need to. Kevin's you got that, Mr. There. Ripple? Yes, I do. All right. Uh, all right. So, so thank you. That, that was, uh, that was nine minutes. Oh, no, that was 14 minutes. So that was a good time estimate on your part. Um, okay. So, uh, are there any comments or observations from our participants? I see 26 in the crowd. I'll give you a second to raise your hand. And then for the committee members, I'm gonna ask you what I always ask you about. Do you have any comments for the good of the committee? Comments, feedback, thoughts? Uh, why don't you go now, Representative Norgren? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering if you could just go through our agenda for tomorrow. All through the meeting today, we keep talking about tomorrow. And I think it would be helpful for us and the public to know exactly what our agenda is from the start of the day at 930. Yes, ma'am. We, uh, we've been publishing that as we've gone. This morning, if you take a look at uh, your email from me, you'll see something with the word uh, uh, final sprint schedule or something like that, where uh, I shared the schedule with you as of this morning. But to your point, it's uh, we've added some stuff and moved some, oh, I'm not ready. I still have to re uh, add uh, Representative Walner's uh, child scholarship uh, TANF money to it. So this isn't a complete schedule. I'll send it to you shortly. How's that? That's fine. I'm just concerned that the public might have lost track. They, they, they could have. Um, I, 
uh, the image that I'm going to send to the committee, I think Mr. Ripple can post uh, to our website. That would, that would try to be helpful. Thank you. All right. So, so let me update it by putting Representative Walner's item, item on it for tomorrow. And then we'll, uh, I'll, I'll send it out. I don't Thank see you. any hands up in the attendees. And so, uh, so at this point, I'm, I'm ready to adjourn. Uh, your hand is still up, Representative Norgren. Do you? No, nope. sorry. Okay, well, uh, so we're scheduled to start again at 930. I, I think many of us are trying to prepare for tomorrow and for this final sprint with an HB1 amendment. So, um, so you got this afternoon to work on stuff. Thank you. So long.